Today we are going to talk about the PSLM surveys. Uh, going to discuss some of the key factors, key indicators that are available in there, and how students and researchers can use them. Uh, my last few videos have been about Stata and using micro data sets. Uh, that is for students or researchers who, have, who already know what micro data is, who already know what kind of research questions they are working on. But recently I received some requests from the students who wanted to understand what PSLM data is and they keep on hearing this uh, data set, the name of this data set, but they don't really understand what this is. So in this video, I'm going to briefly show you how to understand any uh, micro data set um, because there are many. Uh, for example, in case of Pakistan, when we use uh, micro data sets, the choices that we have are PSLM. What is PSLM? Let me scroll down. I can show you. Here it is. Uh, so this is Pakistan's Social and Living Standard Measurement Survey. Um, we can already click that. So here it is. And it shows, it explains everything in detail. What this is, how many targets they have, how many indicators they have and so on. So we have this choice and then similar survey is also in the same, uh, on the same page. When you go down, you can see there are uh, details of all the surveys that they have conducted they go back up to 2004 and 5. For some of them, data is directly linked on the website. Some, for some of them, you have to request it. And uh, uh, it's also, I mean, when it's not working, you contact them. They are usually very good at that. They allow free access to this data set. Um, so, uh, so first data choice, uh, commonly used nationally representative data set is PSL. M or some call it PSLSM, for example, at the World Bank. So usually it is called PSLM, as it mentioned here. Um, and uh, periodically, um, it for some time, what kept happening was uh, one year there was uh, PSLM, the other year there was HIES. HIES is Household Integrated Economic Survey. So uh, initially, these um, PSLM and HIES came together. But in later years, uh, they sometimes they were not really available. So you have to, if you want to get, for example, you can see see this here. Uh, we have PSLM for 1415, but we don't have highest for, for 1415. We have highest for 1516, but we don't have PSLM for 1516. The difference is that uh, Household Integrated Economic Survey or highest. Uh, covers the income and expenditure side of um, uh, the of the individuals. What kind of assets do they have? Um, do are they involved in agriculture? If yes, then what kind of crops do they grow, and so on. So detailed analysis of their income. Um, but in uh, social and living standard measurement, as the name suggests, it covers most of the health and education side indicators, social indicators. Um, it covers uh, water and sanitation and uh, several things like that. So one of the examples I will give you in a minute. Uh, so this, this is the second one. Third uh, is by USAID. That data set is called Demographic and Health Surveys. You can open that. I'm not going to do that right now. And the fourth one, which is commonly used in health economics is MIX, M-I-C-S, MIX. It is a multiple indicator cluster service. All of these data sets have individual level micro and micro data set for each individual, um, for their families and so on, which helps you do some really nice research um, assignments, research papers and so on to understand what kind of relationships we have. For example, if a mother of a child is educated, does that affect the health of the child or nutrition of the child and so on. So today we are, we are going to look at this. So we have, I have this open right now. So uh, as I explained, what uh, this covers is many of the indicators. Uh, by the way, this um, data set was 
initiated because of the Millennium Development Goals, as it's mentioned here, uh, which have been replaced by Sustainable Development Goals. So uh, some of the indicators were added later on. Uh, so to in order to measure the goals set by MDGs, uh, previously there was no such data set available in Pakistan so there was this effort from government and other donor agencies jointly together to create this data set so that um, we can measure our progress um, how many households have access to clean water and so on and so forth so what we can do right now is to give a very quick uh, brief of or just to give you an idea about how to read any micro data set, not really only limited to this one, but any data set. For example, if you open the website of multiple indicator cluster survey, if you simply download the data, open it in any software such as data, you will not really understand it because you need to understand what uh, variables are telling you. So what do I mean by that? Let's go inside this latest Pakistan Social and Living Standard Measurement Survey link right here and so it opens the page for that it has report it has statistical statistical tables uh, dashboard gives some graphs and stuff and because we are going to use micro data we need to click this one so once we do that we have uh, a lot of uh, important information uh, data set can be downloaded from here if you do that you will find DTA format which is a data format uh, for uh, to for the data set to be open in data if you have data if you want to use SPSS you can download this one um, and what do you have to do to understand any any data set you have to download the questionnaires so let's download this one before opening the data set and also you could also download the report itself let's go back mm -hmm. what happened here yeah download the report as well loading 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 okay so we have the full report here and uh, we could actually go and see the table of content so just to give you an idea what this data set contains you can see that it has information about education of the households um, ICT health disability migration housing water supply and sanitation housing perception and satisfaction food insecurity um, and these are the indicators and if you go down in, within the tables you can also see inside education what do we have we have net enrollment rate we have cross enrollment rate this kind of information you can find here in under ICD what do we have we have computer access internet access this kind of information and so on so you open up the report just take a look at the uh, 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 table of content then you can have an idea what kind of uh, data you have inside the uh, data set and what do you want to use because there are many variables that you may not even want to use so it depends right so uh, this is uh, the first thing that you have to do second one is then go to the questionnaire and try to understand what they are try to do so remember that when you open up the data set it has all the information inside it and that information has been entered by the people who did this survey so you have to uh, understand how they entered this data set then if you understand that it will really help you understand how uh, the actual data set will look like so for example you can have a look at each interviewer has its own, his or her own code the date that they took interview in and language of the interview behavior of the respondent all these kind of things usually the analysis that i do we don't really use this kind of information this is household roster so section b1 
and this is how the stata files the yeah stata files are also named sec is short for section so sec b1 if there is a file like that it means that it contains information about this or even if they call it just uh, roster then you you know that this it contains information like this what does it include it includes the name of the household members relationship to the household head but you do not see this uh, usually the names are um, uh, removed to make this data set anonymous um, so you will not see this but usually they have it um, and all this kind of information about so roster is basically the list of the households that were interviewed and uh, uh, their marital status their income status uh, and so on then you go to section b2 section b3 and so on so this is how you can relate a data set a questionnaire to the um, actual data that you will have so i have already downloaded the data set from let me see from here so i already have it let me open that so for example i have it here in the state of format so you can see that this is section b2 uh, in the questionnaire we have it here this is section b2 so this should give us information about migration so let's open it up so here it is so we let me increase the size of it a little bit so as we expected section b2 let me arrange it so that we can see both of these things together okay so section b2 section b2 and we are looking at did you born in this so i mean there are definitely uh, errors in language so basically what they are trying to ask is uh, were you born in this district uh, so here you can find out that if, even though the spelling is slightly different but you can see that the question is right here the answer to this question one or two will be included in this question right here the next one is in which this which it should they should have i mean they meant which district are you from uh, okay no in which district were you born okay so in which district did you born so similar so it's the answer to this question is right here so uh, they have like uh, arranged this question like this so all the migration related questions from this part of the questionnaire are in this file section b2 and if you go back there are section c1 c2 d e depending on what kind of information you are looking for so there is c1 here right here in the questionnaire it's a long one so it is on two pages c2 and so on you you get the point right so this is how you can see that and let me also try to tab one or two so let me go up a little bit we have seen that so we don't need it too big let me do it like this okay and here i could let's say i could do this and i could double click this one it will appear here or i could also type sb2q01 and then i tab it right so i can see that 95% uh, approximately respondents were born in the district in which they were interviewed so it means that the 5.5% were migrants right so this is the kind of information you can get zero these kind of things like zero means that the for four individuals they did not have good data so let's see let's say that they had errors so when you are doing analysis what you should you should do is you should remove this kind of uh, information so that uh, what you have is uh, a clean data set so what i can do is i can um, i can say that drop if i can double click this again and i can say is double equal to zero if this is zero so it should delete four observations 
so it has deleted four observations so what i can do is i can tab it again and i can see that the four observations are have been removed so this is a cleaner data set the zeros were I, even though let's go back here there is no option for zero here so the enumer uh, the enumerators who were recording this information they only had two choices one or two so there are sometimes some errors uh, when they are like noting things down with pens and the data entry operators are using that information to add everything into the data sets sometimes they make some errors so out of 90000 how many observations were there let's see out of let's say 8 807 so 8,71,000 observations or almost 72,000 if there are four of them which have not so good data just remove them it's safe uh, to do that right so similarly you can tab other variables as well and then if when you are looking for uh, more information like looking for research questions looking for some interesting ideas I strongly suggest that you go and uh, have a glimpse at this report report of pslm see what they are trying to tell you um, choose a section that interests you the most for example in my case i have worked for the world bank for some time so water supply and sanitation has been the area that i really worked on for two years uh, intensively so i'm usually interested in that so i can go there 430 something it said so here it is some maps i'm also thinking about making some tableau uh, tutorials uh, some basics of tableau so you can also make these kind of graphs free of cost using tableau public um, but you definitely need a shape file you can always superimpose that shape file on tableau and you have to make some changes because those are slightly dirty files in terms of the names of the places that have, are mentioned there and you can also make these kind of graphs there so but that is for later so if i was interested in water and sanitation i would come into on this section and i will read this uh, little bit try to understand what they are trying to tell you they always give you some examples about what kind of um, impact this this kind of things have so in this paragraph for example it's just giving you how many percent of what is available where right but uh, if you look at the i'm hoping I've, i haven't read it yet but i'm sure that in this section they must talk about some kind of health or something so let's see the term sanitation however extend to the uh, environment sound disposal barrier to fecal disease to collection disposal reduces possibly groundwater distribution contamination which could impact affect human health see it's directly it's actually telling you that there is this relationship available it's not claiming anything it is just repeating what the previous research has told you so this report is full of things like that so that could be your initial point just to trigger some ideas and then you could look into the um look into the uh, papers re related to the research question that you found and then you can build your further ideas uh, around that so if you're working on pslm and if you have any questions i have some other videos on uh, my channel where i have done some other stuff with pslm it was not this basic but there are some other like operational stuff to deal with data sets um, I think there, it was something about merging. Uh, so if you need some other assistance, if you want something else, to, for, if you want me to cover something else, just let me know under the comments and I'll be happy to do that. I cannot promise you that I can do it immediately because of course I have some other stuff to do, uh, but I will definitely do it. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, just drop a message. Thank you.